Hello everyone, I uh, wanted to put together another guide here. This is going to be for Tour 9. And um, the way that I have my bag set up is primarily how I'm going to navigate through this tour. Now here you can see in terms of 3 versus 6 here, these are going to be very, very close. So it really doesn't matter statistically which you're going to choose. And I like to go and give accuracy the extra boost. Aside from that, we're just going to put on our longest rough iron and sand wedges. There's some very, very long holes in this torque. You'll want to prioritize distance if you do put the ball in trouble. What I'm mostly primarily going to try to do is try to go with this quarterback here. And only upgrade to, uh, so you'll see that I put the extra mile seven as my secondary option. However, I'm going to stick with sniper and hopefully quarterback. Uh, sniper is going to be the best uh, wood for this tour without question. Similarly, there's going to be no long iron shootouts. So uh, I highly encourage you guys to, to use uh, the most accuracy that you can as well. So you'll see that I have one right now, Backbone 9. Um, I could upgrade this. Um, not really too worried about it right now. I'll just roll with that. In terms of the ball situation, you're pretty much going to have to stick with Katana's Titan, um, Kingmaker. Uh, and just be able to go down to maybe uh, Navigators very situationally. You'll want to be very careful with that as going down is going to make things uh, a lot tougher on a case-by-case -case basis. But let's, let's just take a look at some of the holes that we get here. Keep in mind, as I mentioned, we're going to try to, if it's feasibly possible to go with quarterback, we're just going to go quarterback. So here you can see we can get up into the fairway. And I'm going to just put on this side spin curl. Um, with a driver, I don't necessarily need to use uh, the notebook tool, but let me just show you, since I probably have time, kind of what we're looking at here. So um, this is significantly uphill, if you guys have ever seen. Uh, you can see that uh, it does go uphill, so somewhere in the neighborhood of one per ring or so. Uh, typically, I'll try to curl this, but uh, I'm not going to in a situation like this because I have that uh, wind effect kind of pushing it over towards the right for myself. So if I was to curl it there, I could potentially put myself in trouble. Another thing I could have done there is I could have used a katana, um, but I'm not too worried about which one I use uh, for the most part. Uh, it is nice to have that length. You'll actually find on some shootouts it to be helpful um, but it's not something you primarily will need for the shootouts here <clears throat> so similarly you're going to find this second approach very uphill as well so i typically use i'm thinking maybe even minus 15 on the approach you'll see that it's very very uphill um, i'm going to be very close to in between clubs so it's just going to kind of depend on it's pretty much just going to depend here on what the wind is because we're going to be kind of towards min sniper and it's a tailwind um, so I, I'm, I'm still probably going to use a, uh, a min sniper type adjustment so I'm thinking you know somewhere in the neighborhood of here um, and towards min club here, it's saying maybe just a little bit more than seven. Keep in mind, we are going to be pulling towards min, so we'll want to use very, very close to that min ring adjustment. So somewhere in the neighborhood of seven rings, just kind of put this right on the edge of the hole. As I mentioned, you know, we're going to be pulling, you can see we're pulling right down at min. <clears throat> ah. Caught a great ball anyway. So really using that min ring value um, is going to be pretty good. And 
had I hit perfect ball. It looks like I might have just slightly under hit that, maybe just a little bit too much. I was trying to do just a little bit just to be on the safe side. And it looks like, you know, the amount that I used was just a little bit too much. So that is one of the things that you want to try to avoid for this hole is trying to make sure that uh, you don't uh, overpower that or and put it uh, in into kind of that in-between zone. But uh, again, you know, we can't predict the wind. So there's going to be a chance that we're always in between. There's no way of knowing. Because you can't kind of play, I mean, the only thing I could have done is played it about 10 yards behind and maybe, you know, ended up going towards max there. But you can see from the take shot view, that's what you're going to want to use for determining the elevation. So anytime you're in the take shot view, you can see the very first tee shot, it's a little bit uphill. And then the second one, the hole kind of disappears completely. Um, so you know that it's going to be even more significantly uphill. And it is going towards kind of the more intense um, ring adjustment for the uh, for the elevation there. It's going to be pretty much at the highest or, or very, very close to almost as intense as it could ever be. But one of the, the main reasons for us to use the uh, quarterback is for shootouts. And here you can see with the distance, it's going to give me um, an extreme... Uh, advantage here. Here you'll see we're going to have a headwind. We're going to be pulling towards max. So I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 13 rings here. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, um, you know, definite advantage here. I try to just kind of barely curl it onto the fairway. I'm probably going to end up using some curl. So let's see if I can't do this here and looks like I went just a little bit into overpower and the reason was because it looked like I couldn't get to 13 rings very easily now this is going to end up shooting down it looks like um, you know I am just a little bit leaning a little bit farther than I like to be I don't like being outside two yards here but I, I needed to be careful and one of the biggest reasons was how strong that headwind is so since the headwind is as strong as it is, I didn't want to gamble and potentially leave it up there on that fairway. So you could see that I was just being a little bit cautious. And that's one of the reasons that I ran a little bit deep and not as close because what you usually like to do is get it to just roll off that fringe. But you also bring in the risk that you're not going to get it to the, to the fairway if you do that. And you can see that I probably didn't quite need the overpower. Um, but I did try to add a ring because when I pulled my rings, I could see that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to get to 13. Um, so right around the 13 and a half, you know, would have been ideal there. So let's take a look here. And it, it, and you could see kind of firsthand um, my opponent there. He, he didn't consider the overplay. And that's one of the reasons that this new tool is so effective is because it it factors in that those type of situations you know most people they're just going to use their max ring adjustment well you can see that instead of me going 10 rings it's more like going 13 rings so if you're not using those extra three four rings you're going to put yourself in a situation like my opponent there and not be able to uh, get that one there so that is something that you're going to want to be a little bit cautious of. But similarly, you know, I'm going to want to try to tighten up the way that I play that because I should be able to get that closer than that. But I also, especially going first, I didn't want to try to take myself entirely out of the shot. Imagine if those shots were reversed and I left it up there on the fringe because I didn't cause it to go down, you know, towards the green and give myself a chance. Well, that could potentially be enough um, to put me in, you know, a lot of trouble, especially going first. Now, what I am going to do, I'm going to stick with the Titan here. <clears throat> 
get a little bit of that extra length. And one of the beauties of this club is being able to be, you know, precise and not need to worry about, uh, you know, potentially hitting this in the rough. Now I am going to be just a little bit shorter. However, you know, you got to consider like what's your holdout percentage going to be on this hole? And you can see from range, even if I am a couple more yards beyond that, say my opponent, especially with a Thor 6, geez. So especially with a Thor 6, I'm not sure why this guy at 4,000 some trophies, he should be in Tour 10 for sure. <clears throat> I'm actually kind of, I'm maxed out on trophies. I should be in Tour 10 soon as well. So let's take a look here. Now you'll see from the take shot view that I mentioned. Um, let's see if we can just see it here briefly. You'll see that this hole's uphill. So you can see how it goes up that slope. So I usually use about minus 10% here. And we're also going to give it some side adjustment. It looks like we are going to be maybe towards mid-ish club so I'm gonna actually end up having to change this or or I can just play the mid number so if you go back in it's going to reset so I can just try to play you know very close to eight rings here um, to keep myself from going back in and here you can see I'm gonna play away from the edge I don't want to be too much of a gambler so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna play it right around eight rings and we're just gonna come at it with curl as you could see that I was going to be uh, well well left if I didn't do this. So that's why I'm gonna to try to curl it at the hole. It looks like I used just a little bit too much. I've been doing that. I've been curling it a little bit much. Uh, another thing that you need to consider is when, when I move down to lower ground there, this might have still been too much of a uh, over adjustment here. Let me, let me I think it was what, 9.1? Or maybe it wasn't. So those rings aren't making sense. Oh, oh. So let's take a look. I, I forget what that wind was. It was probably larger than this, 9.7 maybe. Um, but it might have been, you know, down here towards 37%-ish. I couldn't really tell for sure. And not to mention, when you move the target to lower ground, you're probably going to want to under adjust as well. So I might have just been slightly off in that regard too. These are all things that you want to be thinking about and just try to work on fixing um, if you do, if you're unhappy with the way something worked out. And another thing that can be useful to you is if you record your own shots so you don't have to watch me come play and then you can play your own recordings back and learn from your mistakes. If you made this mistake or that mistake, you could, you could play the replay back and say, okay, I went this many rings, the wind was this, it was wrong, so next time I need to make an adjustment. These are the types of things you need to be thinking about to become a better player. So again here, um, you know, I'm going to have a very good advantage on this hole. Uh, of course we get a small wind anyway. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a distinct advantage on my opponent here. I can even potentially go off the island. So that's one of the beauties about bringing this club. So we'll see how close my opponent is. If he's, you know, two, three yards, um, you know, I might just, just for kicks here, just kind of go for the island, just because, you know, I'd like to really show you guys um, what can be done here um, on this hole. And it will be a little bit towards max, You'll see my opponent here, who I have to play it very aggressive. This is going to end up checking up. Um, it would be probably pretty easy for me to get, yeah, I could go right here and beat that every time. Um, I might just try the, the island here because the wind's small. So if the wind's small, I can essentially take advantage of this guy and, uh, you know, put this in really good shape. We are going to be pulling up towards Max. Ooh. I didn't expect it to be just short here. That's a little risky. I was going to do it, but I didn't expect it to be that much on max. So what I'm going to do is probably use 
somewhere around two backspin here and we'll just try to curl it. We'll use that same ring adjustment, four-ish rings, and you'll see with the extra curl that I can put on, it makes it a lot easier to be able to uh, navigate this hole. So here you can see, I'll take it up just a little bit higher. It comes in at a little bit better angle. So it goes in towards the hole more. That did unfortunately stay up just a little bit too high. I probably should have added just a little bit uh, more curl there. Cause three, three yards is a little lazy. I should have been able to get a little bit closer than that. It looks like for the island there from the second tee box, I couldn't remember it quite being that far. Um, maybe, maybe I'm thinking about playing with rock. So if I, you know, had been playing with rock, I could have went off the, well, I still could have went off the center island. I would have just been right at the max adjustment. It would have been just a tiny bit of a gamble. If the wind was reversed and that was a little bit of a tailwind, I would have just went ahead and did it. But typically you're going to want to try to come in between three yards there. Um, you know, if I put it three yards, I'm I'm only really giving myself kind of a 50-50 coin flip. Um, you do want to try to get it a little bit closer than that. Um, but I, I, I kind of like the way that uh, the line that I took, it looked like it just kind of ended up just a little bit too high on the back slope. And what I, what I typically try to do is try to even curl it just a little bit more than I just did there as well. But right around one to two backspin in that situation um, seems to be pretty good. So let's keep going here. Trainer account. Okay, so, you know, I was thinking about just skipping this hole, but uh, we're going to go ahead and just play this one out. And it's because we got a straight headwind here. So I did want to show you that we will, you know, need to need to club up and kind of change our strategy here. So I'm going to be using extra mile seven this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip and I'm going to use a katana with a extra mile. And what the katana is going to do is it's going to bring in that side spin element. Let's say in theory, hypothetically, we got that same shootout hole. We're really going to want that three side spin as opposed to the power in case that I get a very tricky wind where I can't curl my extra mile enough. So you want to make sure you cover your bases. So a katana, when you put on the extra mile, is going to be a better ball than a titan. And this is something that only experienced people understand. So you'll see a lot of people play with Titans and they just don't realize that what they're doing is actually hurting their probability of being able to win shootouts. So as I mentioned, you know, switching to this and being able to do this in the event that you get to a, a, a hard curling shootout hole, you'll find it much easier to navigate. Now, same thing would have to apply. You know, I'd have to play the elevation if I wanted to. Um, I'm just going to, you know, try to put it up there. I wasn't too worried about using the notebook tool here. It's more about just kind of getting it over here towards the rough. And again, you know, we might put ourselves in between clubs here. But do keep in mind, if I was using the tool, I'd be using it very similar to before. And with the overpower... I usually maybe add plus 5%. So instead of minus 10%, I'd use minus 5%. And that's because I'm going into overpower. I'm not using the max club. So it's basically using overpower. You have to essentially add an extra 5% to the adjustment, give or take. So let's take a look. You know, we're definitely not going to be in overpower here. And it looks like a little bit of a tailwind. So again, I'm thinking I might be very close to the min line on a sniper. So here we can see the wind was relatively close to this. <clears throat> so I'm just going to kind of set it up. Looks like it might even be a little bit... So it looks like we're a bit short of min... It looks like we might want to shift this arrow up just a little bit more. 
So we are going to be pulling down towards min somewhere in here. 5.8, 4.3-ish rings. <clears throat> so let's see how this rolls out. Ugh. So just a little bit too much with my, uh, you know, I was trying to play wind effect. So if you saw me kind of set up a little uh, right there, it, it, I probably ended up just taking just a little bit too much of the wind effect. And it, it looks like, um, you know, my line, I was taking a little bit more of a rounder a rounder line about the hole as opposed to just kind of setting it up. Um, when, you, when you try to play too much break and then you bring it in with too much speed, it just kind of powers through the break. So that's what you're seeing happen there is my ball guide that I set up to hit and then the shot that I actually hit came in much faster. So you can see that it just didn't take the curl. It didn't take the curve of the, of the break there. Another thing that is a contributing factor is the ball guide changing in that situation. Now, I don't typically use uh, much elevation here, and we're just gonna kind of use whatever ring value that they kind of give us. So in this situation, we're gonna be kind of close to mid club, aside from mid club. So mid club is close to seven-ish rings. We're going to need to also play some wind effect as well. So somewhere around seven rings here. And it looks like I might have been maybe 6.7. So I'm going to try to add just a little bit more because I think it's going to land just a tiny bit on the right edge there. It looks like I probably didn't need that little bit of extra at the end. Um, but all things considered, not too bad. It would have been nice to have just a little bit more distance control, but all in all, that's not too, too bad. <clears throat> just came in just a little bit hot and that curled because I, I, I felt like I was maybe towards maybe 6.7 just by eyeballing how many rings I went there. Um, I was rushing a little bit, but with me going just a little bit on the under, adjustment there. I wanted to make sure that I did have a enough curl and it seemed to have kind of just overcompensated. So same kind of thing here, you know, you would want to play right around, uh, you know, maybe 6.7 ish rings. And aside from that, it's going to be about mastering wind effect. So, you know, the guy who can kind of visualize the shot and, you know, doesn't have it deflect off to the side, even though both of ours are kind of deflected off to the side. It looks like I just barely, so 0.10 rings. So 0.10 rings is enough to cost the shootout. So you'll want to be very careful with the... Uh, you know, the way that you play wind effect and being able to get it online. And, uh, you know, had I had just better distance control there, um, it was well inside two yards. So my ball did just end up coming in just a little bit too hot. Um, but my line was a lot better. You could see my opponent there was basically deflected off by 1.73 rings. I was probably only off my line by about half a ring, but it just came in. Uh, you know, about one point, whatever, 1.4 rings too hard. Now, what, what I like to do here is I really like to use quarterback, but I can't, I can't run the risk. So I can't run the risk here of giving my opponent an open, an open chance at being able to drive this green in two. So I typically do use quarterback on this hole, but I need to know where my opponent is. And uh, even, you know, at, at about 400 yards, which would be pretty much anything that's not a tailwind, I'll pretty much just use a quarterback on this hole. So in this situation, 
you could see that, uh, uh, and he's definitely going to be going for it. So this is why I was mentioning that I'm, I, I just can't give him that window to potentially, because with this ball, I mean, this is, he's going to outdrive me by a good 30-ish yards, I would imagine. So somewhere around 450. So if I don't put myself in a position to eagle this hole, I'm going to really put myself in a lot of trouble. And that's why you kind of see me doing the things that I did to make sure that I can get up here at least to give myself a chance. <clears throat> and there's a couple couple of ways to go about this. One of the things I can do is I could just kind of go for the pin. So sometimes what I'll do here, because um, I can't really curl through those trees, so I got to be a little bit cautious with the way that I go about doing this. So I'll probably just try to curl it here and aim right around here. And we'll just try to, um, because I am at a severe distance, I'm not going to waste balls like that. It's Okay, so this tour match doesn't mean that much to me. So I'm just going to kind of play my game to kind of use Titans use katanas, and if I lose, so be it. It, it. it doesn't really matter. I could close this tour out by playing without pay balls. So since I can do that, you know, I'd rather put myself at an extreme disadvantage. Um, I, again, as I was mentioning, I would have liked to have seen my opponent go first, so at least that way I could make the judgment call. So for instance, if I was on one of my max accounts and my opponent pulled that out, I would just go ahead and, you know, if I felt that I had to, the way my bag was set up, I would just go ahead and throw a Berserker on because I had plenty of them. But, uh, you know, I'm going to just try to do the minimum that I can to kind of get through this tour. And maybe I miss this pitch and lose this hole, but it really doesn't matter because all, all in all throughout this, you know, the law of averages, I'm going to eventually close this tour um, because we're not going to get in situations like this. This is kind of just like an isolated case here. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to land a little bit more up on this flat. So you can see how it's the green's just a little bit more flat up here. And that's kind of why I'm trying to land up here um, to kind of reduce the chance because you can see how to the right there, it kind of falls off. So that's why I'm putting the spin on that I am. And I call it my perfect. And let's see if I can get the line. Looks like I did. So there you can see, you know, I, I, I pretty much maxed out as much as I could. I did what I could just to be able to get to the shootout. But you can see I had a much tougher road than my opponent was going to have there. And as I mentioned, maybe I make the pitch, maybe I don't. Another thing that I can do, sometimes I lay up short there and just go for a dunk. So I just kind of take, take the chance that I feel most secure about, depending on the wind and all that. And keep in mind, if I would have got a tailwind, on, or, or if I would have got wind in the face there with a headwind, I would have put myself in even more trouble. You know, my opponent might have just took this outright. Um, but that really doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, I don't mind giving up a couple games because, you know, I'm always going to be in there tight on the shootouts to where I give myself a chance and I'm not going to give up very many games. In fact, I'll take away more games like situations like that by guys making mistakes than the alternative. And similarly, here you're going to see, for whatever reason, my opponent here going away from the island. Um, we're going to go for the island. It's a lot easier to be consistent here. Um, you, you know, this shot is an okay shot. I like it, but I don't love it. Um, it, it doesn't have the tendency to roll out as tight as what the island will. Now, when I get an easy win like this, I'm just going to go for the straight rough bump. So my opponent is just making this too difficult of a shot. So you can see with where they are, um, this is going to be a very easy win if you can, uh, a very easy win here, if you can execute. So let's take a look here, 5.4. 
Um, I'm going to play pretty close to the max line, I believe. Well, kind of right in between there. So right around mid and max is 5.4 rings, and that's all I'm going to do. As I mentioned, you don't have to do anything quite as fancy as what you saw on my opponent. Um, we're just going to play kind of right around here. And just make sure that you don't short hit when you do this, and that's kind of the key. But as I mentioned, you know, 5.4-ish rings somewhere in here. Don't short hit. Don't long hit. Uh, I caught a great ball, but it's not going to matter. All that's going to do is just cause my ball to deflect off one ring. So you'll see that I'm still going to be very, very tight. <clears throat> and that's a very safe win to do that, whereas the other wind is a little bit more of a gamble. <clears throat> So w w when the wind's left to right, it's a little bit harder to pull that shot off because you're adjusting over a fairway and could potentially hit the fairway. When you have a wind pointed that way, all I'm doing is starting in the rough and finishing in the rough. Since all my adjustments are in, like, it, th there's no risk because you're never pulling the club from the rough there. So here's the Milano. Now it would be uh, pretty tough for me to try to set myself up to win here. So I need to choose a method here. And I'm just going to switch back. Um, this is going to be a hard hole for me to win. Um, I'd really prefer to see not wins like this. Uh, just because, you know, it gives, it, you know, shooting first like this, it gives my opponent an opportunity to kind of take advantage of this hole. Let's see if I can get it to stop. Just barely. So we get it down here in range, but this shot is very tough. One of the things that people don't realize is how downhill it is. It always makes kind of an over adjustment. And, uh, you know, if my opponent wanted to go extremely aggressive here, as you can see, they have no po problem pulling out all these expensive balls. I mean, it's a Tour 9 match. So, you know, I just essentially let guys have these. It's, it's whatever. Um, he's still going to have to execute. But, uh, you know, he might be able to pull out a win um, by doing this. I don't think that's going to be enough overpower. I think you should have went full. But let's just see. Let's see if it just gets to the fairway. I think it's going to be short, though. No, it did just get there. And here you can see that it comes up by the fringe. And I put myself at a very... I, I, I kind of, you know, hinted at this happening. But look what he had to do to beat me. Well, potentially beat me. He's... It, it's... Uh, I'm not necessarily beat yet. So I can still make my shot from up here. Um, it is very challenging to do. As I mentioned, you do have to do an overplay. I'm just going to do it by feel here. And try to try to get this hold by feel. But as I mentioned, you know, it's pretty much usually kind of like a max ring adjustment. So I'm thinking somewhere in the effects of two and a half on the rings. Perfect ball. And sure enough, there I'm able to get it. Now, let's talk a little bit about what I did there. <clears throat> Was that a seven or a six? So let's take a look. Um, you know, first thing that I want to mention is it is downhill. Um, what was my wind? About 4.5-ish. Um, we, we weren't at max club, but it was kind of like up here. So you can see this is more or less kind of my adjustment. So it is downhill. You always need to end up playing it, you know, plus 5, plus 10%, something to that effect. And, you know, that's more or less kind of my ring adjustment. Also, you need to consider ball guide offset. The wind effect is going to push it dramatically, especially if that was like towards 9%. So I would have needed to play more wind effect. I would have needed to play it farther out to the right. 
Wow, I did not see that coming. So unlucky on that guy. And you can see my auto emojis just kind of taking off there. <clears throat> so, you know, and, you know, one of the things that I just want to kind of talk about here briefly is you can see this game, you know, it's not really out to get you. Uh, you know, I feel like one of those guys who has that happen, they're going to say, um, you know, they're going to, those are the types of situations where I see guys go to the group and, uh, you know, might say, oh, this game's rigged or something like I, you know, put it up by the green and then the game robbed me on my pitch and my opponent hold out this crazy shot. Well, first off, let me, let, let me tell you, no matter where I am on the course, it doesn't matter where it is. I feel like I'm putting myself in a situation, even if I'm in the rough up there, that I can make the shot. So there's a lot of other game, guys in this game who are very skilled players. So the game's not out to get you. There's just a lot of tough competition out there. If, you know, there's a lot of guys who learned from somebody, you know, whether it be you know, watching your opponent and just kind of getting better by feel, just by experience, or, you know, watching other people play the game and learning, you know, the guys who are trying to put the time in and really learning, um, you know, are able to do things like that time and time again. So do keep that in mind. Now, what you're going to see here, you can see my opponent had some trouble. What I'm going to try to do is essentially try to just blast this down here as far as possible. Um, maybe about five rings over like this. And we're just going to try to get this in play. So one of the beauties of this club is the fact that even with a tough win like this, I can just kind of shoot away. Let's see if I got it to check up. It looks like I did. So that's one of the reasons you saw I took off some of the power. So you can see even with a quarterback here, we can get ourselves in a very good situation. I did have to use either a Kingmaker or a Katana Ball, though. Do keep in mind the side spin here was very crucial. And just try to control your power. As you could see that I did scale it back. It looks like I just held on. It was a little bit closer than I wanted it to be. I just wanted it to be somewhere over there. But you can see that, uh, you know, taking advantage of your opponent's mistakes, even with a quarterback, is very easy to do. So, um, you know, don't overextend yourself in this tour. You can navigate through this tour with very, very little. This is a very fair tour. Just imagine if we played that Southern Pines hole, that, par, that long par five, and didn't get a tailwind. Let's say it was just a sidewind or a headwind. Then that means my opponent doesn't get there in two. I can just lay up with quarterback as well. So you'll see that you can navigate a lot of this tour with quarterback. And what I typically do here is just curl no real power or overpower and kind of bring it in like this. And you'll see that I'm just going to curl here. No power, no nothing, no, um, no real top spin or anything. I just try to get it onto the green. And if I get the line right, it looks like it's coming in towards the hole. It looks like I actually ended up getting it. <clears throat> so maybe my opponent feels less bad about being eat, um, beat by an albatross as opposed to, you know, making a mistake and losing to uh, Eagle because you never want to, uh, to lose that hole by making a mistake. So there you can see I did end up using a Katana ball, or not Katana, a Kingmaker ball. Looks like we got about 20 more minutes to go here. So we're going to keep going here. And again, this is another great hole to just kind of bring quarterback. Think about how few times you're going to hold this out for Eagle, especially into a headwind here. So if at all possible, we can get through this with a quarterback, 
I highly recommend it just in case you get to a shootout where you can really take advantage of a quarterback shot. There's going to be at least three par threes. So I'm thinking um, the Greenwich Point, well, no, all the Greenwich Point ones, all three Greenwich Points. If you play those, you're probably going to be playing driver and you're going to have an, a, a, almost a guaranteed win when you play an extra mile versus a quarterback. Now, one of the things to consider is I do need to get this ball down here. You can see how close my opponent was there. Putting it in the rough there could be a catastrophe. It could be still okay if you get a tailwind. So here you can see um, there's Kingmaker. I want to see if I can get away with a... Uh, it looks like I probably can. It might be just a tiny bit of a gamble, but not too much. So I'm just going to try to get away with a Titan here. And I do expect that it's going to land probably around 10 rings or so. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to minimize my curl because I don't want to miss the fairway on the right-hand side. So here you can see I just blasted down there for, uh, full. I have my accuracy on my side, and I should be able to go with a... Now, let's say I was going to use the notebook tool there, which I didn't. So first thing is, this is a very, very downhill tee shot. So I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of um, plus 15% at least. Um, and into a headwind, we're looking at probably at least landing eight rings short there. So you would expect to see that shot be about eight rings short. Oh, wow. I didn't expect that, but I wasn't paying attention either. I don't know. I don't know how he got there. Now, what I typically do here is I use uphill. So here you'll see that the hole kind of disappears. So I'm going to use a plus minus 10% here and 6.5. Let's see where we are in terms of, it looks like we're going to be almost towards min club here. So I could just pretty much just use that min adjustment 5.6 rings, somewhere in there. What I try to do is I try to create an angle typically. So that's why you can see this. Um, I'll try to play this not too aggressive and just make sure that I kind of take care of business here. So I'm not going to really do anything too fancy. You're, you're, you're just going to see me play these 5.9 rings and we're going to just play away from the hole. That's typically the way that I uh, go about doing this one. Because it's just too much of a gamble when you're in that angle that you don't want to uh, run the risk of not getting this hole by putting it in the sand. We have to get so close to that sand that if we great balled it, it would probably be in the sand. So that's why you typically see me from over in that right fairway. And keep in mind that there's going to be a chance that we can go to the left fairway on this hole as well. We're just going to need some kind of tailwind or at least, you know, 10 o'clock two o'clock at least. Now, what I typically try to do here is aim more at the hole um, and try to use less of this slope. When you use this slope, it, it makes it more of a lucky shot if you're able to get it. And let's see how this comes down. It looks like he did get it. So as I mentioned, um, I do like to go just a little bit more direct route because when you get very high up on that slope, it has the tendency to potentially curl off or run through the break if you don't do everything just perfect. So something you'll just want to be very, very careful of, cautious of, if you do find yourself in that situation. But hopefully, you know, following my channel, you know, hopefully we keep you out of those situations. So here is another one of the Greenwich points. And as I mentioned, this is going to be a hole where we have a distinct advantage. This is a very, very tricky win, though. That's the only problem. This is a very, very challenging win. So we're going to need to execute here. Here you can see max club is going to be 14. I do expect to kind of be pulling towards that a little bit towards towards max club very very close you can see that i'm kind of keeping the ball guide a little bit longer because i expect it to expand down so i'm thinking you know at least 13 or 14 rings here 
plus a significant amount of curl. Didn't want that great ball. <clears throat> but here you can see that we can take advantage with our extra backspin and be able to get in there very tight. As I mentioned, somewhere in between 13 and 14 rings there. <clears throat> And we're going to have a distinct advantage over extra mile, all extra mile, because a great ball with an extra mile is almost catastrophic, especially on a hole with a slope like this. And what you'll typically see that I do, I usually go for this rough bump. With the quarterback, it, it turns this hole into child's play. But we need to get just a little bit easier win than we had. So I needed to play something a little bit safer. Keep in mind that I was considering wind effect there. I was only using four or five backspin. Um, as the wind straightens out, I'll pretty much use max there. I'll pretty much just use max if it's a side wind or a tail tailwind, whatever it is. If I need to play that shot, I would just do it with more of a max. And as I mentioned, a great ball with a extra mile um, is pretty much going to take you out of the shot altogether. It's going to be a very, very challenging hole. And you'll see with the quarterback, um, we'll be able to... Uh, you know, get through there, no problem. So let's keep going. I'm going to do two more, I guess. Let's see if we can't, since we just got this hole, let's see if we can't get a little bit better wind here. <clears throat> Up, and here we go. This is perfect. This tutorial, even though we're not getting a lot of the holes, um, we're getting multiple perspectives here with, uh, you know, this is the second time that we, we've had to, we, we've gotten to play two different shots, which is nice. Um, so again, this is one way to go about it. So you can see my opponent has an Epoch 5. In fact, uh, I, I'm going to have, you know, in my opinion, I still have advantage over Epoch 5, Epoch 6, Thor 6, um, you know, the only thing that I really don't have advantages all over is a POC 7 and 4-7. But aside from those two clubs, um, quarterback is the next best thing. I don't need to be up there to, to potentially win. In fact, I can just, you know, go. I can go over to this left-hand side here. And, uh, you know, if I can get down to that fairway, it looks like I'll probably be pretty close. I'm going to play it about, you know, nine-ish rings with some curl, and we're going to have to max it out. And we'll see if I can get there. Like I said, though, you know, we don't have to hit all these, uh, you know, epic shots uh, to give ourselves a good chance here. So one thing that you'll see that I did is I just kind of counter curled it back. And if you want to know with what I did in terms of notebook, you know, we kind of talked about this. I forget what that wind was, seven-ish. But it was like this, like nine-ish rings. So that's kind of what I was looking at um, for the way that it was landing. Nine, nine and a half rings, somewhere in there. <clears throat> somewhere in there. But you'll see that I set myself up with a very good angle. And a real good chance here. And even if I miss it, you know, that's fine. Uh, we just go to the shootout. Again, same kind of thing. You know, this is uphill. It's not It's not substantially, but it is somewhat. So first thing you want to do is just kind of scan that zone. And I do kind of feel that I'm going to fall, be pulling up towards mid-club a bit. So six, six-ish rings here. And then aside from that, just play your offset. <clears throat> so checking a bit, I think I was a little bit short of 5.6 rings as well. And also ended up curling it because I don't. I think I might have just played a little bit too much offset there. But all in all, not uh, not something I'm too worried about. 
You know, I just want to give you guys more than anything a rough idea. You guys have seen me play these holes a lot. So if you needed to see me uh, playing it, you, you know, you could find any tournament that has hosted this hole. There's been the Royal Open. There's been quite a few. And, you know, oftentimes I do find myself in either rookie or pro over in that left fairway. With that straight view at the hole, it gives you a very good chance to be able to get that with an iron. So another hole where, you know, I, I typically am going to have a pretty nice advantage, uh, especially with this tailwind situation. Well, not this much tailwind because I'm going to have to go, uh, I'm going to have to go sniper here. So that's too much tailwind. Now, if I could get a, a small tailwind, like say six miles per hour, I can just take quarterback since it has so much accuracy. I can just crank the backspin up, use the back hill, and it really helps me with distance control. I can do something my opponent just can't do. And there you can see he does just wind up just a little bit too high. So I shouldn't need too much elevation here. You'll see that it's relatively, relatively straight up. I might use maybe plus five here. Keep in mind, eh, no, I don't even think it needs plus five. You can see it's very, very flat. And we are going to be pulling away from max, so make sure that you're considering that. And you can see with what I'm doing towards my slope. So I'm going to be pulling towards mid, so I'm only going to use about a mid adjustment. So I'm going to pull up here towards 12 some rings, a little bit of curl here. Ah, the great ball is going to not make me quite as happy, but well, it's actually not as bad as I thought. So I might have been a little bit uh, light on my curl. I was being a little bit cautious. But you can see that I can put it, you know, to a yard, um, you know, and I just kind of kind of wing that. I could see that I was going to be pulling down towards max. I tried to do about 12, 12 and a half rings, and you could see that it was relatively spot on. I had to do it in one pull there because I was a little bit low on time. But you can see, you know, the differences between one ring, especially on a sniper, it's going to be very, very small. It is going to be important that you have control of your power um, because you never want to make mistakes like that uh, when you don't. But you can see that uh, the way that my opponent, his shot went kind of out of control, it's because you're not considering the magnitude of that tailwind. So that's one of the biggest things players make is they'll just under pull the rings because they'll play the max club value. It's not enough rings. Okay, so what most people do there, they'll pull 11 rings and they should have pulled, you know, 12.7 or whatever, you know, towards the mid club. So in this situation, uh, you know, you, you, you saw me play this one once. It's going to be very, very similar. Again, hopefully the accuracy of the uh, quarterback is going to keep me in trouble. One of the things that you'll see is I try to play it away from the trees. So I don't put, play as much curl as I would with a longer driver. And the reason for that is, let's say that I end up just a little bit shorter than I just did there. So I might have to switch up to extra mile in certain headwinds. However, in this tailwind situation, if I can keep it to the left, even if it's a little bit short, I'll at least be out of the shielded view of the trees. So that's the reason that you see me kind of play it towards the left. And if you want to talk about the notebook number, you know, I, I, I typically just try to eyeball things. But you can see here, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of if that's the wind, Kind of an extra 10% beyond the max number, 10 to 20%, which looks like you know 11-ish rings is about is about where that's going to land. So let's take a look here. 10.6. Not going to use the slider again, but I'm just going to eyeball the slider. So I can see that I'm kind of towards mid club. So I'm going to use much more towards mid club on my slider. Oh, I might even be short of min club. 
mid club. So maybe 9.5 rings here. Keep in mind when I pull down towards lower ground, it might even be even, so I'm not even going to go 9.5. You know, we kind of discussed this last time. The more that you pull down towards low ground makes you have to even adjust even less rings. So had I not hit that great ball, I would have given myself a chance there um, to potentially make that. And as I mentioned, you know, as I pull down that hill, if a wind angle pulls me down that hill, make sure you underpull your rings, even what the, the notebook tool tells you. Because there's one thing we can't predict and no tool predicts is when you move the target down to a lower surface, it causes it to even underplay even more. So I essentially almost had to use the min number or even lower than min because I end up pulling down towards the lower ground. So do pay attention to that. Uh, I'm going to wrap this one up, guys. This is going to be the last hole that I play. Um, good luck with your Tour 9 play. Hopefully you guys find this uh, guide useful and, uh, you know, it helps you navigate this tour. Keep in mind, you know, just think about the things that I'm mentioning to you guys in these guides. Because there's going to be a lot of skilled players you can run into in this tour. Now, Fortunately for you, a lot of them do move on. However, you could cross paths with guys that can just go ahead and put it in there close every time. Um, you know, you never know when somebody's bringing up a brand new account. Okay, and if they know the game inside and out, the game's not against you. You just need to, you know, eliminate your mistakes and try to not let your opponent beat you. Try to make it to where you're in control of winning or losing. <clears throat> so let's see here, another Greenwich point. And as I mentioned, you know, with the quarterback, another distinctive advantage here because we're gonna be able to see a lot of ball guide, especially once I get my quarterback to a 10. So as soon as my quarterback goes to a 10, I'm gonna have even more of an advantage on this hole because then I'll have 4.5 ball guide instead of 4.0. Not to mention my accuracy is being so high. Now, I typically don't really use elevation here. You can see that the land zone is very close to the height that I'm on here. So I'm just going to need to either use my slider or I'm going to need to use my intuition to kind of split the differences if I don't want to use the slider. For example, you don't have to adjust the mid number. You don't have to adjust the max number. You can pick a number in between if you want to avoid playing the slider. Now, overall, that's a very good shot, especially with an uh, a POC 3. So it is, my opponent's going to make me work for this one a little bit. So there you can see, up towards max, I'm pulling down towards mid. So I'm going to use more of a mid club adjustment. Now, what you'll typically see that I do is I try to play the fairway here. And I'm thinking somewhere in the effect of this is pretty much what I want to land. And you can see that that is right about maybe eight-ish rings, eight and a half, nine, somewhere in there. So right around here, um, I'm not going to need curl in this situation. I'm just going to try to use the slope, the natural slope, and try to get it. Oh, oh, oh. Let's make sure I get, ah. So just a little bit out of control there. I totally butchered that one. So it didn't, well, what ended up happening, let, let me actually explain. I probably should have uh, curled this a little bit um, because the ball guide expanded and I forgot to even think about it. So it was a tailwind, the ball guide expanded. And because of that fact, I ended up going a little bit too high because I didn't curl it. So had I put some curl on that, I would have given myself a really good chance. Um, I, it was something I wasn't even thinking about. I forgot that the ball guide was going to do that. And these are the types of things that you know you want to be thinking about. And it just kind of takes some more tour practice and um, rehearsal to, you know, if I, if, if I was playing tour nine, this is the first time I've been in tour nine for, you know, four months. So going back and trying to remember every single intricacy, you know, it's, it's, it's something that might have a learning curve to it. And you just want to try to do the best that you can. 
and, you know, learn from that mistake. Now that I remember, um, you know, and I'm able to acknowledge, you know, that was totally my fault as to why that happened. I, I should have used a little bit more curl. I was, I was thinking too much about the ball guide and not about the way that the shot path was going to change. So I recommend you guys doing the same. Always be thinking about wind effect. It's always going to be, in, it's always going to be something that's there. So you always want to be considering this, even slipping up and forgetting about it one time. As you can see, it just completely took me out of that hole. I mean, that was completely just butchered it. And it had nothing to do with my land zone. It just had to do with remembering that the ball guide is going to expand because it's a tailwind. And since it's expanding, it's going to expand much more towards the north end as opposed to like expanding towards right down the slope. So I should have put some curl on that. In fact, I probably should have pulled back one more ring because I probably started my um, ball guide too aggressive on the start because since the ball guide is going to expand, you need to leave it just a little bit shorter on the beginning there. So do keep that in mind. Good luck with this guide, and I will catch you guys later.